Okay. Welcome back, everybody. So this is Shomik's uh, seventh lecture. Uh, so take it, take it away, Shomik. Yeah, thanks. So uh, let me just start. So okay. So last time I talked about the celestial op op. So basically, uh, we had to uh, prime primaries like this. Uh, and uh, yeah, so they are inserted on some points of the celestial sphere uh, so this is the celestial sphere and you have this here so suppose this is z1 z1 bar and this is uh, z2 z2 bar and then op of course corresponds to you move these operators close and then uh, you will have an operator product expansion like plus descendants. Okay, I haven't talked about the descendants actually. So I'll talk about that. I'll give examples of that. So once we know the local uh, symmetry algebra, so these descendants, they are actually of uh, local symmetry algebra, okay? And this is some primary. So, and then we actually, I talked, uh, so I gave an example. So suppose you have two uh, gravitons. So two outgoing both positive velocity. So. Okay, and then the leading term. So when I just talk about the leading term, what I mean is essentially the holomorphic OP limit where Z1 goes to Z2 and Z1 bar, Z2 bar is held fixed. So this, uh, okay, so this, goes like minus z bar one two so this is the beta function and then another grab positive velocity graviton primary plus there are other terms okay which are subleading in z one two so this is the leading term as z1 to goes to zero but then there are other descendants also okay so uh, so similarly you can also write in the holomorphic op limit the okay so that you can also have a negative negative helicity graviton OP and that will look like sorry this G is minus bar okay so and then you also have other terms so these are uh, so these are the terms so basically the op uh, 
uh, on the celestial sphere is the same as collinear limit. in the box space or the momentum space okay and then the thing was that the collinear factorization well uh, essentially gives you the op Tells you that the OP should exist because there is a, because that factorized uh, structure is required for the OP to exist. Okay, and then there uh, then we talked about this uh, this thing. So I'll actually start with this. So basically, the in order to uh, understand the structure of this dual theory uh, basically one needs to find uh, well i mean it is useful to know the op uh, between so maybe you probably mentioned this but i don't remember the relation to this. Yeah. This, this beta function has poles right so what yeah. is, what is the physical significance of these poles yeah so i'll come to that actually so uh -huh. yeah so i'll uh, so once i mentioned the su su super translation uh, i'll just come to that come back to that so OP in between the say the leading soft graviton so this is the generator of super translations and uh, primary Okay, so this uh, okay, so this could be obtained. So the way we did this is that we expanded this in power sub z bar. Okay, and then we obtain this to far ends. Okay, and so, okay, so now basically the OP, we want to find out the OP between P0Z, P minus 1Z, and this phi epsilon H H bar, Z, Z bar, or in, well, or equivalently, we want to find out the OP between this S plus 0 Z, Z bar and some, some other primary which is phi epsilon h h bar z z bar okay so this so how does it look like so this we saw that this could be obtained uh, from from the soft theorem So here, of course, we just want, uh, sorry. So this we had to expand. So we take ZZ bar going to Z1 z1 bar and expanded the soft factor basically in powers of the z minus z1 and z bar minus uh, z bar one and what we obtained was we wrote it in this form so there was the sum like this
Okay, and then Okay, I'm just uh, omitting the zeta in the del bar thing and then Okay, so these are the super translation descendants. So these objects, these new operators. And so these are the super translation descendants. Okay, so so these are and then basically we wrote down that what is the correlation function with the uh, with the in, in, insertion of these uh, super translation descendants. So since this holds, since this uh, equation holds for any uh, for any any scattering amplitude, so I can write down an OP um, uh, in in this way. So this is the OP. So this is an supposed to be an operator statement. Okay, so this is the OP uh, between the, uh, this is the leading soft uh, graviton. Okay, okay so how, uh, so now you can see that uh, for examples, Okay, so what is the definition of this leading soft graviton? So this is, uh, know, for example, that. There is a bar, okay. 
so now uh, you look at if you look at this you can see that this op has a term okay suppose let me take this phi, okay or any phi epsilon set okay i keep just phi epsilon so this has a term like this right which is minus and then this epsilon one so what is p1 uh, so p1 this increases so okay let me write it as p1 only so p1 increases the scaling dimension by one uh, but it does not change the spin Okay, and of course there are other terms <clears throat> now. So, or if I just okay, now the point is that uh, if you now go back to this OP. I mean, this OP uh, to positive helicity gravitons. Okay. So, what was the leading term there? Mm. Okay, so this is, this is what, and now you can see that this, this beta function has poles. So what does it look like? Okay, so this is the definition in terms of the in terms of the gamma functions okay so you can see that this expression uh, so this gamma function so this has poles that did uh, say for so this pole okay now what we can do is that we can take this i mean what we can do i mean this is very important um, take the conformal soft limit at the level of op op okay and the point is that this so this what i mean is that i i have this op i have this uh, particular op and now i want to take the soft i want to make this g plus delta conformally soft. So that means I have to take these limits. So leading conformally soft, suppose, so delta goes to one. So that's where, uh, so that's where the pole. So one of the poles of this is located there, okay? At zero of the gamma function. I mean, delta minus one equal to zero. Okay, so there's a pole like that. And then, So if you do this, then this just gives you one and delta goes to one. So beta function just gives you one, okay? If you take multiply by delta minus one and take uh, delta to one, then this, uh, then this factor together with delta minus one that gives you one delta, you say delta equal to one that gives you delta one minus one, this 
can handle this. Okay, so this just gives you one, and this OP in the conform in the leading conformal soft limit just becomes this. <clears throat> okay and this is essentially what uh, this object is so what you can do is that you can take so this these are for the outgoing yeah? so you can take this by epsilon one h1 h1 bar z1 z1 bar to be this this object and of course here epsilon one equals plus one this is outgoing Okay, so epsilon Sorry, one. Yeah. Shamik, in the previous equation, uh, the subscript of on the right hand side should that be delta one plus one, not delta yeah. one plus one. Yeah. Ah, right, right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, this is uh, delta one plus one. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, so this is and the point is that then of course this phi epsilon one in this notation. This one. So you can see that this OP is actually consistent with the with this uh, form of the. So this you can think of this as uh, the soft theorem as the leading soft theorem in the OP form. Well, this is one of the terms. I mean the whole. Theorem, of course, is uh, basically this whole uh, OP ex expansion, but this is essentially the leading soft theorem or the leading term in the leading soft theorem in the OP form. Okay. Okay, so this is consistent with that, and now you can see that this this the uh, this has to be true. Because, well, I mean, this has to be true in the sense that uh, this, you cannot, of course, get the beta function in this way. But the point is that the, the fact that you will have poles in delta, so that is already uh, fixed by this, okay? So that you cannot play with that, okay? So this is one of the things actually, but you have basically an infinite number of poles, but only two poles, that is, uh, I'll be talking about only two poles, but you have also other poles. But it turns out that at least in the case of the NHD amplitudes, you don't need the rest of the poles. You just get the uh, leading and the subleading poles, and those basically give you the rest. I mean, what uh, happens at the rest of the poles, okay? And this, and uh, physically, so this is related to the global space time translation. So that you can see from here, if you look at this OP, so this uh, second bracket, so this, so this object, um, say this whole object, so this object is essentially the OP of P minus one, the current, and this phi epsilon one, h1, h1 bar, z1, z1 bar, okay? And this is the, and this is basically, and this residue at one over z minus z1, that is essentially, what is that object? So that is essentially the global transformation, uh, which is generated by this p minus, uh, p minus one z, which is the same uh, as the global space time transformation. Okay, so uh, that's so sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah, can I just clarify one thing? So uh, yeah, the fact that you have uh, an infinite number of poles that is a consequence of the uh, consequence of uh, 
no, there being the super uh, infinite number of super translation generators. No, no, no. Is that right? No. Oh. No, no, no. The super tra well, so super trans so this actually I discussed in there. So uh, super translation. Oh. So this is essentially just polar delta equal to one. Oh. So what? Because oh, yeah. that is what we are getting because this uh, this object this uh, leading soft uh, 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 operator. So that was obtained by taking delta going to one and just looking at the residue of this graviton. Okay. Okay. And then this is equivalent to these two currents, which are generators of the super translations. Okay, but how? How would we have anticipated that, that there should be infinite number of poles in this uh, in this uh, beta function? Well, so it turns out that is well, so that uh, one can show actually in the sense that well, for that what you have to ask is that uh, where uh, that where does this come from? Okay, so this part of the thing, the like or where this beta function actually comes from? Mm -hmm. Okay. So there are two ways to see this. One, <clears throat> which was done by uh, basically in this uh, in the early uh, in the uh, earlier year. So, so let me just uh, uh, just let me give you the. So this was this uh, paper, uh, well, sorry. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, which, where is this? Uh, uh. So, so there are two ways to do this. One is this uh, by, this, uh, Okay, so what they did was that they basically, so you have, you can basically get this beta function, okay? If you demand two things, first of all is global space-time translation invariance. And number two is the global sub subleading symmetry. So I did not talk about that actually. So, but I I told that there are three types of uh, soft fa fa factorization. Okay, so global sub subleading soft symmetry. So it is global. So that should be kept in mind. So they together actually give you this beta function. Okay, now, so basically the, we know the factorizations. So, So we have soft factorization. So we have three kinds of soft factorization, right? So S basically n plus one, you have one over omega. I mean, it is very schematic or schematic, okay? Then you have another S in say zero, one omega. So these three factorizations are there, and each of them actually lead lead to our identities. Okay. Now it turns out that this sub subleading factorization means this factorization. So this here, I mean, you have a soft factor here. So I did not write that thing because well, I did not. I don't have time to go into this actually. 
so and that if you use that then you can actually get this beta function and then that beta function shows that well i mean at least at the level of op i mean uh, at the level of op you have poles at all the negative uh, well at all the delta equal to 1 0 and all the integers minus 2 like this okay yeah poles like this now the second thing which actually does not use this thing this global sub subletting transformation which was actually done by us so Okay, so there actually what you basically use is essentially use the, the leading and the subleading soft factorization. Leading and subleading soft factorizations and then they give you the beta function. Okay, so this you can show. So you don't have to actually assume these things. So you can, so this, the thing, uh, the reason I talked about this local symmetry is because they are extremely power, powerful. So because, so once you take them into account, they actually give you a lot, okay. So these poles, so they are actually, they can be determined in these two, two ways actually. And basically, of uh, I'll be talking about this uh, this thing. And yeah, I will. I mean, I will not have time to talk about like how to get the beta function, but I'll write down and just uh, state actually. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So that is the um, thing. Now, so this uh, right. So this is essentially the point. <laughs> And so you can see that these poles in the, the, the poles in beta function, they are actually associated basically with the poles. I mean, the, these soft poles actually at delta equal to one, zero, minus one. I mean, at least all three poles are there. So it has to be there. Okay. Because this is an operator statement. So I can insert it inside an A. And then I can take the soft limit here and then that should be consistent with this. In fact, this is, so the, the important point, so this is uh, one of the year point actually is that, so this has no, no analog in ordinary 2D conformal field theory. Okay, I mean, this is something which is very specific to this actually, okay? No analog in ordinary 2D CFT. So what uh, it is not an, an analog, for example, so basically what we are seeing here is that we start with a gra graviton of some dimension delta. And it turns out that as I vary uh, delta, we generate various symmetry algebras. So uh, these objects like P0, Z, P minus one Z, there you can see something like say one over delta minus one, uh, G1 roughly. So I take delta equal to one. Okay, similarly, this SL2C bar currents, which we have here, so they are like, so it is the same delta, uh, it is the same G, but you are just changing the scale, scaling dimension. And we'll see that this is actually extremely power, extremely powerful. Similarly, you can also define the sub, sub leading thing in as at delta one over delta plus one because that is where this so this has no way in the sense that all these uh, these uh, these p zero z p minus one z or j a z where a is zero plus minus one they actually basically come from a single uh, so they come from 
a single uh, graviton. Okay. So in in that sense, I mean single graviton by varying the dimension. Okay, now this has very uh, important uh, consequence actually that we'll see. In, in fact, uh, what what is most surprising that this I mean this particular thing is extremely powerful. So that actually, so let me show you that why it can be so powerful. Okay. Yeah. So is there any question at this point? Okay. So if there are. Uh, no other questions. Mm. Let me know. Okay, so you can actually do the same thing in the case of the so. So basically, you can say so. So now, actually, how does one get the constraints? Okay, so one kind of. Okay, so one. I mean, which we have actually stars started. So how does one constrain? Hello. Oh, actually, there is no electricity here. Sorry. Constraint scattering amplitudes. Okay. So what we have done so far, actually, I'll tell you about that uh, only because, well, so there are other. Uh, there is so basically this. Uh, this is essentially the story of the null states uh, or primary. Well, so null states is a sort of uh, is kind of misnomer here because the point is that we don't have any notion of norm here. So what is null? But well, I mean it is. Let's just uh, call it null states. Okay, but they are. I mean they should really be called primary descendants. Okay, then. Okay, so how, uh, so this is how, so this is actually uh, familiar from uh, like exactly solvable 2D CFTs. Okay. Now, how does this work here? So you can do all this algebra. So we know all the co co computators and these things. But one important way that where this uh, where these thing is actually being used. I mean, the fact that I mean, which has no, which is not there in the usual uh, two-dimensional conformal field theory. So that can be used actually. Okay. So how do we use that? So, so this is actually a constraint. So suppose, uh, so consider the OP. Talking about, I mean, you can also talk about the negative helicity ones. Hello. So is it? Yeah, you're uh, still. Uh, yeah, you're still okay. Yeah, we can. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because I mean, there is a power cut here actually, but I think the internet is still working fine. Yeah. Op of the graviton, this and a conformal primary. Oh, and let me just omit this epsilon symbol. So epsilon is implicit here. So it is either outgoing or in, incoming. It does not really matter for what you do. Okay, suppose this, so this OP will have some particular structure. Okay, so there will be some term, some structure like this. Oh, sorry. Okay, so let me call it. Uh, 
sorry h1 h1 bar so some structure like this like z minus z1 to the power m z bar minus z bar 1 to the power n and then you have like c m n and some other operator say phi uh, m n okay so this these are just uh, i mean we will have an expansion like this but the point is that this expansion <laughs> well so what is it so typically so these objects they are actually descendants uh, of uh, uh basically okay so their local symmetry algebra descendants of some prime end. Okay, so this is important actually. Well, I mean, this is important means I mean in all I mean in the cases where this has been done in the in the MHB case. So this is what you get actually. Okay, but you you can also I mean it is not necessary. I mean well you can do it in this way or you can just uh, write down the global uh, the global SL two C and SL. I mean just a long of his transformations and. And the four space time translation, you can consider just descendants of them. Okay. Uh, and then you can actually try to bootstrap in the same way. Like sometimes I think these 2D conformal field theories, they're like you don't really consider the full infinite dimensional algebra. You just look at the SL2C algebra, which is finite dimensional, and then you try to bootstrap it. Okay. So that is one way. I mean, one way in the sense that if you can't solve it exactly, then you can do it in that way. But the point is, it, it turns out that in some cases here, you can solve it exactly, okay? So, so I'll be talking about that and then, well, but of course that is an uh, open question that are how to set up that kind of bootstrap uh in this case actually because you don't just have the sl2c but you also have the global space-time translations and all and re recently i mean there are some work uh has been done on that maybe i can actually give you that uh, re 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 reference and then yeah so let me <clears throat> for the time being let me talk about this uh, this thing because this thing is extremely powerful just like in two-dimensional conformal field theory okay uh, of some primary and uh, uh, but the point is that so this op is there okay but the uh, but this op has to satisfy uh, the important point is that this op uh, has to satisfy three constraints What are those three constraints? So the first one is essentially the leading conform uh, the, the leading soft theorem. Okay, which is which tells me that limit and delta going to one, delta minus one, this G plus delta. Okay, so I can take this. I can take this particular uh, limit on the right hand side. Say just the way we did it in this case. Okay, here. 
we have done it here. Like we took the limit here. So you can take the that whole uh, limit on the full uh, right hand side. Uh, and so you can take this delta going to one limit here, and then you will be left to some objects. Okay. So these phi's, of course, will not uh, change, but uh, these c's. So these c's, they are functions of this uh, delta and uh, delta one, delta one bar. I mean, or h one, h one bar, all these things. Okay. And so in that limit, so you will get some expressions for them. Okay. So let me so let's write it in this way c prime mn and then i have phi mn z1 z1 bar Okay, so this is some descendant. So this will, well, I mean, this can also change in the sense that this descendant, uh, the dimensions of these descendants, uh, those can depend, those genetically will depend on delta H on H on bar. And then let me just uh, write it in this, uh, some prime. But this prime is just the changing the dimension. Okay, but then we know that this must match this expression right the because this op is just given by this expression okay so that so that is fixed once and for all okay so in terms of the leading sort of theorem okay this expression so let me just write it as Soft theorem in terms of the super translation descendant. Okay. So you can match like, so this has to match order by order with this thing and then that will gi give you some uh, equation and in most cases that it well in the sense for so okay so let me give you an example okay uh, that uh, where <clears throat> this thing well so i'll give you that example uh, in the case of suppose now let me take the subleading conformal soft limit okay so that is This is some like this is the subleading conformal of limit uh, in terms of the SL to C bar descendants. This current SL to C bar. descendants okay and this must be also equal to this with some so you can write it as some um, mn Okay, so you can, so now let me give you, so let me show you, uh, give you an example. 
where actually this uh, this can be uh, this can be seen an explicit example actually let me just give you well i'll talk about the image amplitude next time but let me just give you just algebraically describe uh, what that thing is Okay, good. So consider this OP. So an OP of this form. I'll write down one term in the OP. Okay. And that looks like this. Okay, so this is this p minus two comma zero. You can see. So this is a super trans. So this is a super translation descendant. Okay, so this is one term in the op. Okay, which is of order one. You can say so. It is order uh, z. I mean, there is no power of z minus uh, z one minus z two or z one bar minus z two bar form. But there are other infinite number of terms. So that's why I write this symbol so that this term belongs to this op. Okay, now the question is that is this OP okay? So let's see. So is this so so first question you ask is that is it consistent with leading soft theorem? Okay. So what do you have to do? So I have to take the limit. So suppose that means I take delta one to one. Okay, so I make this G plus delta one soft. And this, and so I have to, okay, so so I have to consider the order one term, okay? So this is a order one term in the OP, okay? And now I make this G plus delta one soft, I take delta one to one. So this is actually about the leading soft theorem. And so now I have to ask that, what is the order one term in the leading soft theorem? Okay, so for that, we can look at this expression. Mm, yeah, for that, we can look at this. Uh, so for that, we can look at this uh, expression and you can see that you have only one uh, term, uh, which is just order one, which is just this, this one for a, a equals two. Okay, because the rest of the terms, they can't be, there can't be in order one term because you have one over z minus z. Basically, this, this whole expression is multiplied by z bar minus z one bar. So you are not going to have an order one term from there. You can have order one term only from here and that too. So you have to set a equal to two. That means this corresponds to p minus two comma zero. Okay, so, and, So this must be 
equal to p minus two comma zero g plus delta two z two z two bar. Okay. Now the now this so this follows from the soft theorem, the leading soft theorem. Okay. Now, what do we get from from the OP from this uh, OP? And you can check you have this beta function, and you get the same. And from OP, you get the same answer actually. So you get the same answer. So this OP is consistent. Okay, so this is the same as this one. Okay, so this OP is consistent with the leading soft theorem. Now, what about the subleading soft graviton theorem? Okay. <clears throat> So the second question that you asked is that what about subleading soft graviton theorem? And it is not actually, but how can this be? If it's a con consistent o OP, well, so what about subleading conformal soft theorem? Well, apparently it is not. Okay. Because what is the, so how does the subleading conformal soft theorem look like? So you have to basically do an expansion. So you have to actually expand uh, in terms of the SL2C bar, current algebra generators. And let me just write down the expression. So I'll take uh, say, uh, five or ten more minutes. Okay, so yeah, sure, please. Uh, huh? Yeah, please, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I, because I just so I have to write down this subleading here. So it's some uh, work actually. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah. So okay. So this is essentially what we get from the so subleading soft theorem, but this can be written as And then you get J one minus P. And so on. You have other terms, but the point is that well, so it is uh, so the note which I have actually uploaded in the Dropbox, so that has this rest of the terms actually. But the point is that I want to consider only the order one term. Okay, I I am just looking at uh, because this uh, consistency has to be ordered by order in z z one minus z two and z one bar minus z two bar. So I just need to look at, so I, so now I'm asking the question that is the order one term in this OP consistent with both the uh, soft th 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 theorems, okay? And now you can see that what is, so what is the order one term in this OP with the subleading soft gravity term? Okay, so let me now call it G plus A. I now go back to this notation where
okay so what is the order one term so you can look at this you can you can't have any order one term from this term or rest of the term because each of them is actually uh, multiplied by this term z bar minus z bar z bar minus z1 bar similarly z bar minus z1 bar square so this is the only term in the op which can give you an order one contribution and that contribution of course will come from p equal to one term so it is this term j1 minus 1 which is sign so it is minus j1 minus 1 g plus delta 2 z2 z2 bar okay and now but we can see that this term which we expect to be there from the subleading conformal uh, soft theorem is not the same as this term because this is a super translation de descendant and this is a descendant and okay so this is a current algebra descendant the sl2 c bar current algebra descendant so what is happening here so how can that be so what is happening here so apparently the thing is that well i mean something is wrong but the point is that if you like well if you do it you can check it twice thrice and more than i mean whatever number of times you want you will see that i mean you will always get this op and this op has to be consistent with this that means um, that this p minus 2 comma 0 g plus delta z2 z2 bar is in some way same as j1 minus 1 g plus delta 2 z2 z2 bar okay and that is essentially an an op operator statement and we will come to that actually so let us now take the subleading conformal soft limit of this this term in the op, OP okay so what we do is you take delta 1 going to 0 delta 1 times g plus delta 1 z1 z1 bar so well this will be some number actually so you can uh, so this will be delta 1 will be 0 so this will be some number okay i'm not you can just, i mean i'm not just try to say let's call that alpha times you have p minus 2 comma 0 g plus delta 2 minus 1 okay and this must be equal to this term okay which is minus g1 minus 1 g plus delta 2 z2 z2 bar okay so that means the if this op uh, has to be consistent with the soft theorems then this relation must be true So this, that means this particular uh, uh, operator is actually zero. Okay, or this, this if you call, the, okay, so alpha actually I can find out. I think it's in the, let me just see. So, So finally, actually, this equation uh, becomes actually you can write it as uh, delta one minus one. Huh. So this well, I mean, 
say there is some algo okay say i'll do it I, I can write down i mean it's in the a actually you can see so this operator is zero or if you define this state okay then this shy so this is a null state so a null state must exist actually okay then you can actually check it algebraically okay i'll uh, talk about it uh, next time that you don't need to do this you can do it purely algebraically but you can see that this null state must, must exist and what it means is that if i have a scattering am amplitude and if i insert this shy then this must be zero okay and this translates into a conotion strength uh, because <clears throat> I mean, well, so this will look something like this. Okay, uh, plus some. Um, equal to zero. So this is a constraint on the scattering amplitude, on the hard scattering amplitude. So nothing is soft here actually. Okay. So I just wanted to illustrate this because you, you can see that this could not uh, be done in the ordinary conformal, in, in the usual conformal field theories because these conformal soft limits are not there. So this is essentially, so basically what we did is that we determined the OP between G plus Delta one and G plus Delta two. And then I know that this G plus Delta one, if I, if I change the two of this, uh, Facing dimension uh, delta one, then for different integer or zero, I mean uh, values of this delta one, I get a different uh, cartons, and I know that what the op should be, and it turns out as you can see from this explicit uh, expression that it is not uh, consistent in a straightforward way. And that consistency basically requires existence of these types of states, which uh, will actually be zero, okay? And then these are translated into Connaught strengths for these uh, scattering ampli amplitudes, okay? So that is one, so this has been done in the case of the MHVA and that is, and that restriction is basically associated with the fact that the symmetry algebra is the uh, simplest in that case, okay? Uh, which is also, I mean, which comes from some pro properties of GR, say just QCD, okay? Uh, just tree level gluon scattering amplitude if you are interested in gluon, uh, gluon MHBM amplitudes. But the thing is that this is basically the thing you can do it algebraically that I'll uh, discuss next time. But this should be clear actually that how this thing is basically it is very simple that we have this OP and basically my OP it has to be consistent uh, with the soft th 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 theorems. And that essentially requires the existence of these states uh, which are null. Okay. And that translates into some constraints for the scattering amplitude of the hard particles. So yeah, so I think uh, I will stop here. So yeah, this alpha, the value of alpha actually, well, I mean, it, you can, okay, next time maybe I will do it more here. So yeah, so I think I will stop here. So if there are any questions, then you can actually ask me now. I mean, this is a very uh, beautiful piece of work. So, uh, who did this first? Was it you or uh, somebody else? Yeah. So this was first done by Yasser. Very nice. Which which paper was it? Oh, this is this uh, the so so all these things. So from yesterday, uh, from the last lecture, 
these 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 word and uh, these uh, like these objects and all these things so they are actually all discussed in this uh, these these uh, band, band, energy goes and fall so that okay. one so it is basically all everything is like i'm just uh, discussing that particularly okay so yeah so that is a thing so yeah so you can actually it is written more clearly in this paper so so uh, so, so this would be uh, constraint on the scattering amplitude so if i wanted to recast uh, reconstruct the scattering amplitude in the original variables in in terms of the mandelstam variables i would yeah so that can also variables. be done uh -huh. Yeah, so that I will do next time actually. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so, but let me just uh, mention it to you actually. Since you so the thing is that I was not planning to discuss this thing here, but since you asked this thing, so I just uh, discuss since. But now since you are asking this also, mm. so let me. So it is just a sim simple change of uh, variable actually going to this. Like you do it on the sphere. And then you can go to the P space, and basically these equations. Okay, where uh, I'm just looking at my. At, basically, what you have to do is that you have to. Like each of the basically each of the delta that you get, you replace you, this has to be replaced with this combination. Okay, so that uh, well um, maybe actually next time I will do it explicitly. Sure. I sure, mean sure. yeah, but this uh, well I am not just able to find. So so uh, so this would reconstruct for us the. Uh, the scattering amplitudes in Einstein in Einstein theory, ordinary the two derivative gravity, is that right, or is this more general than that? Yeah, this is far more actually. Absolutely, yes. Now, MHV. So actually, we talked about the so we talked about the MHV amplitude because that is where the sees this local symmetry algebra is actually known. To. Okay, so that is so that I will discuss uh, next time in the next lecture that what like what one needs to do if you want to go beyond this lecture. Okay, so beyond you mean uh, if you wanted to work in an effective field theory framework where we put in R cubed terms, high derivative terms, is that yes. possible as well? Ah. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Very nice. Okay. Because the thing is that what happens to them is that basically they change the soft. Well, the leading soft theorem will not change. Okay, so the super translation, what I did, I mean, those will not change. The subleading soft theorem has certain yes. So, but those are all known actually. Like, what kind of terms does what? So it is all known. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that can be done. But well, yeah, it uh, it can definitely be done, but it is some work actually. Yeah, but of course, I mean, all of these things you have to do. <laughs> it is all some work actually. You have to do. But the thing is that at the, at the end you get get some nice structure. So these I wanted to particularly so so this can be done purely algebraically, just in like two D conformal field theory. But the point is that what is very distinct from two D conformal field theory is is this. Conformal soft theory. That the point is that I mean all I mean as you change the scaling dimension of G, you get all this super translation or the SL2C bar algebra, the current algebra, all these things, and that actually puts a very strong constraint on the. I mean it turns out. I mean that was very sur surprising, but that turns out to be the case actually. Right. Yeah. So basically, this OPE, uh, this uh, this OP, uh, I mean this SL2C bar current algebra. So that interpretation we we actually basically first did that thing. 
so that uh, the interpretation of the subleading stopped a graviton theorem as the SLPC bar current algebra. Uh, and that was required to write down the OP actually, because once you start writing down the OP, you will see that without that, you cannot really factorize. And then the super translation word identities were all sent. So it is all in that uh, three or three. So if you want more details actually, but I think the basic thing should be clear from here actually. So okay. that's what I'm yeah. trying to say. Uh, the rest of the things, I mean, if you are interested, you can go through that algebra, but the point is mm. that the basic, the basic thing is extremely simple actually and okay. quite physical. I mean, there is nothing very algebraic or math, mathematical in this actually. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So next time, actually, I will talk about uh, these things, uh, basically, that what needs to be done if you go, want to go beyond this, okay, and what are the issues that we are facing. And the... Very good, very good. Yeah, so next time, I think, yeah, next time I will focus on that, because that is an important point, I mean, what <clears throat> yeah. has to be done. Yeah. Okay, are there any other pressing questions? Okay, uh, let's uh, let me stop recording and